Hello everyone, my name is Stanley St. Rose. Now today we're going to be talking about The Pigmen, written by Paul Zendel. Now, before I go into some analysis of this work, please remember to leave a like, subscribe, and or comment so that the channel can continue to grow. Now, The Pigmen is a very interesting novel. It's, it's quite strange. Uh, what happens within The Pigmen is quite strange. Uh, but let's just get to the meat and bones here. Let's just get to the truth of the matter, uh, to the center of the novel. What basically happens, we get introduced uh, to John and Lorraine. Um, John and Lorraine are two so um, high school sophomores. Um, you know, they're in high school. They're, they have all these complexities of life as teenagers. And, and we all know what goes on with teenagers. You know, um, your body is changing. You're getting taller. Um, you know, some people are short, some people have zits, some people have different weird things going on with their bodies, and some people um, feel attractive, some don't, some feel weird, and, you know, some people have growth spurts. High school, middle school and high school are awkward times, awkward times. People are changing, people are developing facial hair and all that kind of stuff. Um, and so these kids, when you're introduced to them, they have, uh, you know, all types of bodily issues that they're going through that they're trying to understand about themselves. Um, some, 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 you know, truths are starting to set in like, um, John, you know, Lorraine tells us that, um, he, he's not that bad of a looking guy. Um, while Lorraine, on the other hand, she's, she's just not that pretty of a girl. Um, she's not like, you know, ugly run away. Uh, but, uh, the way that she's described within this novel is that, you know, she's not the prettiest girl around. Um, you know, she's not, you know, you know, terrible, terrible looking, but, um, She's not the most, um, you know, prettiest girl around. Um, again, this is how they're described within the novel. Um, there is, you know, very close relationship between these two. And um, at one point in the novel, they do end up kissing. Uh, and it seemed like they were going to become a thing, uh, but they don't really go anywhere. Because uh, the novel is not really about their romantic relationship. It does get too close to that so at some points within this novel, uh, but it doesn't go all the way there. Um, so these kids, they're drinking, although they're underage in this town that they live in. Uh, they do drink, um, you know, they do um, do a lot of things that, um, you know, high school kids shouldn't do. Uh, but um, it's the normal high school kid stuff that they try to get away with, you know, drinking underage, uh, parties, things like that. Um, you know, girlfriend, boyfriend, things like that. You know, these are the, the biggest worries in children's life, you know, uh, worrying about, you know, who you're dating, who you're not dating. Um, you know, who's together, who's hooking up, who's, you know, who's doing what in the school, you know, high, the typical high school complex life of relationships, friendships, and who's popular and who's not. Um, so they, they do have their group of friends uh, within this book, John and Lorraine, um, and, and some other friends, uh, they, uh, they started to prank call people, uh, and they had this contest, who can prank call someone the longest, keep him, keep someone on the phone the longest to prank call them. Uh, and, um, and, you know, uh, John, one day he stumbles upon Mr. Pignotti, the pigman, and that's the name of this book. Uh, so when you're introduced to the pigman, you're like, oh, this is the pigman. This is who the book is about. And yes, yeah, so we get introduced to the pigman, uh, and, um, John and Lorraine, they quickly become really good friends with, uh, Mr. Pigman. At first they were, they tricked him. They said that they were a charity. They got a check from him. They, um, John spent the money. Lorraine felt bad about spending the pigman's money, uh, but John spent the money. Uh, so they tricked Mr. Pigman, and f um, at first they scammed him, uh, but later what happens, um, they become friends with Mr. Pigman, um, and P Mr. Pigman kind of becomes a type of fiber figure. Uh, now let's talk about a little bit about John. John and his family life, he doesn't have a great family life. Uh, his parents want more from him. His parents are not that close to him. He has an older brother that's, you know, older, that's like, you know, very much older than him. Uh, and, you know, he's already working, he has a job, he's responsible, uh, you know, his parents are like, man, your older brother is, is great, is, he's awesome, he has his life together, uh, but John, he's like the black sheep of the family, you know, he's getting into trouble, getting into mischief, you know, uh, underage drinking, uh, getting all, into all types of trouble, so his parents um, are not, you know, uh, really that proud of him. His father wants him to join the family business, uh, but but John is like, nah, you know, I got to live my truth, you know, be an actor. You know, it's kind of like that old cliche, you know, the parent wants you to be, you know, settle down, buckle down and get a good paying job and, and get something like that. And the kid is like, no, I want to be an actor, dad. You know, I want to be a star. I want to 
I want to be a musician and, and, and you know, uh, but, you know, parents are like more uh, drenched in reality uh, to the point where, we, you know, parents know that, you know, life is not as good as it seems. Sometimes, sometimes people make it. Yes, sometimes people do make it. But most of the time, most of the time, you got to get a normal job, a, a good paying job to pay the bills, to pay your rent and not be on the street. And, and that's that's what we get from the father here uh, on John's side and the mother's side. John has some, you know, ideas about his parents. He believes that his parents are not really that much in love because they don't really show that type of love. They don't really have that close connection that you should have when you're married and with children. You know, they don't really have that type of connection. So um, that's John's life. He doesn't have that close relationship with his parents. Uh, but Mr. Pig with Mr. Pignati, he feels welcome. He feels, you know, you know, maybe a, a better um, relationship, a more open relationship. Um, maybe he feels a little bit more a, a love, even when we're we're talking about uh, Mr. Pignati. It, it's it's strange. It's strange because Mr. Pignati is a very it's an older man. Uh, he was married, but his wife died. Um, that's what we learn within this not within this novel. Um, so so yeah. So John does have a close, you know, bond with Mr. Pignati. It's kind of like. Uh, what his parents are missing, the love and attention that his parents are missing. He kind of gets that. He feels that, that attention, that love, that, 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 you know, that warmth from Mr. Pignati that he doesn't get from his parents. Lorena, on the other hand, um, it, it's kind of the same thing. You know, her, her mother thinks that she's a baby, that she's a little girl, uh, that she's not supposed to be, you know, having boyfriends, going out, not growing up, but you know, Lorraine, she's she's a teenager now. She wants to step out on the world, you know, step out on the world, uh, you know, start to have some experiences, you know, whatever you think about that. But you know, she she says within the novel and she has a conversation with her mom that you know she's not a little girl anymore. She wants to go out with her friends. She doesn't want to be alone. She she wants to explore and see the world for what it is, you know. Um, so that that's something that. Um, uh, that's with um, Lorraine and with Mr. Pignotti, these two kids, uh, they don't have to be shut in. They don't have to be indoors. They can just be themselves, right? And Mr. Pignotti is not really a great host because what does Mr. Pignotti does? He gives them alcohol. Like whenever the kids come to his house, he gives them drinks, wine, alcohol. Um, he treats them like adults and, and they do like that. They do like that this adult is treating them like adults. So they do feel free when they go to his house. Um, so basically, John and Lorraine and some other friends, they do after school, go hang out with Mr. Pignotti, spend time with Mr. Pignotti. Uh, they go to the zoo. Um, they order stuff. Mr. Pignotti, he uses his money on them. He buys them stuff. Um, he really takes good care of them. Um, you know, they go roller skating. They buy skates and skate around Mr. Pignotti's home. Um, ultimately, uh, what happens is after, you know, a few months go by uh, Mr. Pignotti while they were skating in the home and clamp, clamp, clamping up the stairs and clamping down the stairs with his roller skates on. Uh, Mr. Pignotti, he's just too big. He's a big guy, all right? He's a big guy. He's an old guy. Uh, his heart can't take it. Um, and ultimately, uh, he has a heart attack. Uh, and Mr. Pignotti goes to uh, the hospital. And Mr. Pignotti leaves them uh, the key to uh, his house. He tells John and Lorraine, hey, you can keep hanging out in my house. Um, just enjoy yourselves. Have some fun. Uh, you can use it after school, uh, no problems. Because Mr. Pignotti trusts them because he was alone. When when they when they prank called him, uh, he was alone. His wife had died. Uh, you know, they were all by themselves. And so um, when the kids came into his life, he had he had some family. He had some people with him um, that uh, that made life worth living again. Uh, because all he had before was his was his wife. His wife is dead. Uh, he doesn't have other family members that were introduced to within this novel. Uh, it's just him, John, and Lorraine. Um, Mr. Pignotti, you know, when we're introduced to Mr. Pignotti in this novel, I thought he was a serial killer. Personally, in terms of, of deeper meaning and analysis here, I'll give you the two cents that I have. I really thought Mr. Pignotti was a serial killer. I mean, this man, he has a pig collection in this weird little room that he shows the kid of these, these pigs that he's been collecting. Um, he started by giving his wife a pig, and then he started his own pig collection, collecting weird pigs. I mean, if you go to somebody's house and they have a whole room dedicated to pigs, you know, you would be creeped out. I would be creeped out because pigs, I mean, I, I mean, pig, pigs are great bacon. Uh, but other than that, I don't want a bust of a pig or a statue of a pig in my house. That doesn't seem, you know, pigs belong on the frying pan. 
or in my dinner. They don't belong uh, on the shelf. I just, I just found that to be very weird. I really thought he was going to kill the kids and this was going to become some type of serial killer mystery. But that's not what happened here. So he just has a pig collection um, that he's very fond of. That's like his treasure. Um, so uh, the story goes on. Uh, Mr. Pignati's at the hospital. They go and see Mr. Pignati at the hospital. Everything happens well. They, they say hello. They say, oh my good, we're, we're so happy. We're so happy that you're okay. Um, the kids, while Mr. Pignati is um, at the hospital, they do spend time in his house and enjoy, eat his food. Um, and this is where um, John and Lorraine, uh, they go into some type of weird relationship type of thing. Not a relationship, but one day while they're hanging on Mr. Pignani's house when he's when he's in the hospital um, after the heart attack, John puts on, puts on one of Mr. Pignani's suits. He fixes himself up. He looks, you know, handsome. And then Lorraine goes and puts on uh, one of um, uh, Mr. Pignani's wife's dresses on. And she looks beautiful. She looks attractive. And they start playing around. The, you know, Lorraine runs to the to the bedroom. John runs after her, um, and and you know he gets her on the bed and he kisses her. Um, and so they have a weird uh, kiss uh, under pretend, and their relationship is kind of weird after that because they really don't know where they stand. I mean, Lorraine is is pretty much gung ho. She's ready to have a full on relationship uh, with John, but John he's not really that ready he, he just i guess he just wanted to kiss he wasn't really like you know locked and loaded to start dating lorraine and this this kind of rocks lorraine because he thought that maybe there was something here maybe they were going to be boyfriend and girlfriend maybe this was going to be the start of a relationship but in john's mind that's not what it's painted and and, and to keep in mind here throughout this book we do go back and forth into uh, Lorraine's, from Lorraine's perspective to John's perspective. It keeps jumping back and forth, back and forth, from the beginning of the novel to the end of the novel. We keep getting their ideas on life, on people, and their perspectives are different, are very different. What they think about each other, what they think about situations, what they think about different people, how they judge each other, how they critique each other. It's very different and very interesting how the author gives us a way in which to look in both um, um, each perspective from John's and Lorraine's. Um, so sometimes they clash, sometimes they're 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 on the same page, and sometimes uh, they're completely uh, on different sides of the uh, you know situation spectrum, um, uh, depending on what situation they're facing. Um, so the story goes on. Um, they throw a party while Mr. Pignati uh, is at the hospital. Uh, and um, it gets crazy, you know, kids come. At first it was awesome, it was fun. Lorraine uh, was wearing, uh, so pretty much all the girls go upstairs when they get to the party and start wearing uh, Mr. Pignati's wife's, dead wife's clothes, her dresses. Uh, and, you know, um, you know the, they're dancing, drinking, um, you know, having fun, having a good old time. Uh, and ultimately what happens is, um, you know, a dress gets ripped uh, the, the apartment gets trashed. There's a guy that comes in and breaks some of the pigs. He was the party crasher, the one that nobody wanted to invite. Uh, but he comes, he breaks the pig, and the party gets wild. The police come and break it up. You know, it gets bloody. John fights the kid that breaks the pig. Uh, and, you know, it gets nasty. And, and the police come in and they arrest uh, John and Lorraine. They bring them back home to their parents and their parents, you know, Lorraine's parents are mad. Her, her mom is mad. John's parent, you know, already thought he was a disappointment. So he's now more of a disappointment. Uh, and Mr. Pignati, he's crushed um, because he thought these kids were his friends, were his family. Uh, but look at how they trashed his apartment while he was sick, while he was in the hospital after getting a heart attack. Um, after everything that he had done for them, this is how they repay him. Um, and what pretty much happens at the end, John and Lorraine, they really, they really feel bad about everything they did to Mr. Pignati, from trashing his house, to having the party, to taking advantage of him. Because let's, let's not get it twisted here. Throughout the whole novel, the kids are just taking advantage of Mr. Pignati. He has money. He has an apartment. He's like the cool old teenager that has all the stuff, and you want, you are only friends with him because he has stuff. You know, people have done that in life. You know, that, that one kid you were friends with, that one friend you were friends with, maybe because they have a car and you did. Maybe they, because they have a nice place to live and you didn't. Maybe because they had that game, that toy, the cards, 
whatever. They had that that they had that stuff. You didn't have it, so you befriended him, them, or or him or her, so that you can get access to that stuff. So this is the relationship here. Mr. Pignotti, he's an adult. He has stuff. He has alcohol. He has an apartment. He has money. He can afford things. And so the kids became friends with him because of that freedom and luxury that Mr. Pignotti provided. So they were taking advantage of Mr. Pignotti the whole time of the novel. Um, um, what ultimately happens is at the end of the novel, uh, they do try to amend the relationship. They start to realize how bad of, you know, you know, they're bad people. You know, John and Lorraine are very bad people because they were just abusing and taking advantage of Mr. Pignotti. Um, so they had this tradition of going to the zoo to hang out and to see this monkey, uh, that Mr. Pignotti really loved. Uh, and ultimately, uh, what happens is the monkey dies uh, and um, Mr. Pignotti, upon hearing that the monkey dies, he falls and his heart gives out um, at the zoo, um, you know, in front of the uh, monkey chimp, you know, exhibit, and uh, he falls and dies, and they take him away, and John and Lorraine, uh, they're completely crushed. Uh, and, um, you know, the novel ends with, you know, Mr. Pignotti dead, uh, and the kids pretty much just walking away. I mean, he died of a heart attack, uh, and we can say that John and Lorraine are definitely responsible for that heart attack. Uh, and um, basically the story goes on and um, it really ends there with them kind of like reflecting on their lives of what happened to Mr. Pignotti and um, trying to keep his memory alive and trying to not be such horrible people. Because John and Lorraine, I have to tell you, they are pretty much horrible people within this work. They took complete advantage of this man. Now let's talk about some some themes, some some deeper meaning, some analysis here. So this novel is very complex. There's a lot that's going on here. We have the relationship of John and his parents and his family. We have the relationship of Lorraine and her family. Uh, we have the, the different friends and, and what's going on in the town. The, you know, the kids are, are young, they're in high school. There's, there's relationship issues, you know, people trying to have boyfriends and girlfriends. You know, there's, there's the way how they see their bodies, something that they're beautiful, think, some things that they're not. Uh, you know, John is, is, according to Lorraine, John is not that bad of a looking guy. He actually looks pretty good. Lorraine, on the other hand, she doesn't think she looks pretty good. And um, John says, you know, you know, maybe she's not, she's not the worst looking girl, but, you know, she's not, you know, drop dead gorgeous. Um, you have the whole relationship issue between John and Lorraine. I know at some point we thought they were going to become a couple, but that never happens. I think Lorraine is, is more into John than John is to Lorraine. I think when they kissed, it was just it was just that um, John maybe wanted to just kiss uh, his best friend. And, and 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 I understand that, you know, when when like this is one reason why, you know, there's always this 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 eternal argument whether or not men and women can be friends. Um, if a man and a woman are friends and get really close uh, this this is what that this is one thing that's very controversial because if you're a man and a woman and let's say you're a man and your best friend is a woman, um, you have everything there. You know everything that would be in a relationship, you have it there. The the intimacy, you can talk to each other, you can laugh, you know, chuckle, he 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 ha, you know, have a good old time, eat together, hang out together, spend time together, hours on end, talking, sharing feelings, all these types of things, feeling really close. So you, you have a female best friend, you're a guy, you have a female best friend, you're, you're a woman, you have a male best friend, and you have that, that close bond together. You know, there's, there's bound to be times when it gets so emotional, so touchy, so touchy-feely, then, 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 you know, you start hugging and kissing. I mean, sometimes it happens. I mean, um, it's, it's probably not the best way to, to have a friendship. Uh, but when you get, you know, when you trust someone, you get close to someone and that person is in your life 24-7 and, you know, they are of the opposite sex and, you know, you get really kind of close. There comes to these points where that bond gets so tight that, um, well, you have those moments. So it gets it gets weird for them. It gets weird for them because they had already defined the terms of their relationship that they were just friends. But then the kiss kind of like, you know, makes it very weird and also very creepy because you have to keep in mind, they were in Mr. Pignotti's house. Lorraine was wearing Mr. Pignotti's uh, uh, wife's clothes and John was dressed in Mr. Pignotti's suit. So it kind of looked like they were husband and wife kissing on the bed. 
it's just weird. It's just very weird. Maybe that's like talking, it's a foreshadowing maybe what they might be in the future, but it was just kind of a weird way for them to express some emo romantic emotions that may be there, that they maybe they both have thought at some point. Lorraine is definitely into John. It's it's John who's not ready to, to, really, to really, John doesn't really show that he's like, you know, falling for Lorraine. So that's that. Other than that, they, they have um, some really, you know, tough family issues. I mean, John, um, his family are not really, you know, with him. He wants to be an actor. He wants to be revolutionary. His dad is like, man, you're wasting your life. Well, I'm joining the company, join my business, and earn a good living. Uh, but John, he wants to be free. He doesn't want to be trapped like his dad is trapped in, in just a dusty job, you know? Um, um, but... But yeah, I mean, Lorraine, on the other hand, with her family dynamics, her mom just wants her to be a little girl. Her mom doesn't want her to grow up. Her mom wants her to, to, to you know, be just normal and work hard, go to school and things like that. But Lorraine wants to be out there, wants to be free, wants to date and party and, and just be one of the kids. So there is that clash between um, the, the family dynamics of these kids. Um, other than that, in terms of deeper meaning, something we can look into, again, we have to look, to, you know, we have to say it, uh, John and Lorraine are just horrible people. They're definitely just horrible, horrible people. Uh, they're, they're really horrible, horrible people. They abused, they took advantage, uh, they neglected, uh, they, they thought about themselves when it came to Mr. Pignotti. He spent a lot of money on them. He bought them food, he bought them things, he bought them clothes, he bought them whatever they wanted, he bought them gifts. Uh, and they were just there to spend, 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 take advantage, drink, use his apartment, have a party, not really care about him when he tried to really care about them. Um, so they were pretty heartless in just taking advantage of this old uh, widow, uh, old man. So it, they, they're really bad. And, and again, it's their actions, um, their, their, their lack of um, empathy and tenderness and kindness and compassion towards Mr. Pignati. And eventually kills him. They did have fun. They were close to each other, Mr. Pignati and the kids. Uh, but ultimately, um, they could have been better. They could have treated him better. They could have uh, been there for him. Uh, and they could have, you know, advised them not to jump off up the stairs. That was really bad of them. But again, they're just high school kids. They're sophomores. They don't know that much about life. Um, but, you know, by the end, I think they learned a very valuable lesson about life. That to, you need to cherish people not take advantage of people, be kind to people, be loving to people. Um, and so going forward, I think maybe they'll be loving and kind towards each other uh, um, and not mistreat each other. Uh, but but as teenagers, they're, they're horrible. Uh, but um, I do think they do learn a valuable lesson by the end of this work. Uh, we also have to take into consideration that this novel has some really philosophical ideas that are going through it. Uh, number one, John thinks about his mortality, his life. Um, and, and maybe why he should probably take his life more seriously because Mr. Pignati, his life ends in a very, it's, it ends in a whimper, all alone, by himself, nobody to love him, nobody to be with him, just all on, all on his lonesome, all by himself. And so it's kind of sad. And, and really, John comes to the realization that if he and Lorraine didn't come along, you know, Mr. Pignati would have died on his own, at, alone in his apartment with his wife already gone. So it's kind of really sad how sometimes in life you can end up all by yourself. And this is one of the truths of life for a lot of people who don't want to have kids or who don't want to have a family or who wants to be alone and spend money on themselves. It's a, you get a, a future kind of like Mr. Pignati, alone in your apartment when your friends are gone, when there's no more party, no more clubbing. If you don't have a husband, if you don't have a wife, if you don't have a, you know, a kids, if you don't have kids, you're going to, you know, you end up like Mr. Piglani, all alone in a very crowded and, and, and nasty apartment with things all around, old things and knickknacks all around, all by yourself, in your lonesome, um, and you're, you, you would, you know, befriend a bunch of high school kids because you're so alone, you just need people in your life. Um, so there's a lot of to say about the life of Mr. Pignati and how sad it is, um, and, and, you know, why not to end up like Mr. Pignati? Uh, he really does end up like, um, you know, like the pigman, um, um, a man, a big man, a fat man. I mean, again, I don't, you know, not to be insulting here, but he's a very big, a big fat man. You know, it's he's just a very big man. I don't know how else to make it nicer. I'm not trying to be mean here, but yeah, Mr. Pignati is a really big man. Um, 
his apartment is kind of cluttered. He has a bunch of knickknacks, a bunch of things from like the ancient times and his apartments. It's not dirty, but it's really ancient, you know, old dresses, his wife's dead clothes, like his wife died, but he should, he still has all her clothes, all her stuff, all his stuff. They're just a bunch of clutter all around the apartment. Uh, and he's just a pig in his memories. Um, but, but it's not like a pig wallowing in his mud, but the pig man is a pig man that, that, that wallows in his memories and his sadness. Um, and, and that's, that's one thing about the pig man that we can define the pig man is a man who's not wallowing in mud like a pig, but a pig man who is wallowing in his depression and his sadness and his loneliness of losing his wife and, and being all alone and befriending these kids at the end of his life to kind of somewhat have some joy in his life. So it's it's quite uh, revolutionary here. Um, but um, yeah, the title, The Pigman, uh, you know, we can define it as that. Um, this is The Pigman. Mr. Pignati is The Pigman uh, who wallows in his memories of joy that he once had. Uh, but, you know, he was wallowing in depression and loneliness uh, before John and, and Lorraine came into his life. So yes, Lorraine and, and, and Lorraine and, uh, and John did betray Mr. Pignati and abused him. But I have to say, if it wasn't for the kids, this man would have had, would have died a lonely, lonely death. Um, and um, you know, he, he suffered a lot. It's when the when the kids betrayed him, when the monkey died, uh, when his wife died, all of that piled up in the end and really killed him because he just had lost so many things in his life. He couldn't re really withstand losing some more, but he did, and and that took him out. That took him out with his weak heart. That took him out. But yeah, that's that's the novel. That's what's going on within it. I hope um, that that helps out. Uh, please remember to leave a like, subscribe, and or comment. And I'll see you guys in the next video. That was the Pigman.